Hello, could I, uh, could I speak to Miss Chapel, please? Thank you. Hello, Miss Chapel. Mr. Barlow. Yeah, the very same, yeah. Peg leg, pop eyes and a green parrot. No outstanding characteristics, really. How are you? Good. Well, I've just got this problem, you see. I've got a free afternoon and nobody to spend it with. I just wondering how you were fixed. Great, OK, 12 o'clock then. My place. And come round, dress for the great outdoors. What? No, no, not potholing. That's indoors. I just thought we'd go out somewhere where we could try and get away from everything and forget everything, innit? Ah, uh -uh. it's a surprise. Well, if I told you that, it wouldn't be a surprise, would it? You're as bad as Peter. Great. OK, I'll see you then. 12 o'clock. Bye. You get back all right? Oh, hello. Hello, Emma. Yeah, we had a bit of a skirmish on the border with the picks and scotch, you know, but we fought our way through. It was just a roaming band, really. I know what you mean, a vegetable with the picks and scots myself. Mind you, with me, it was more roaming hands. Oh, yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, when did you get back then last night? Uh, no, no, more the early hours, really. Hence, uh, this little lot. You know, it's only when you do your own washing you realise how much more of everything you wear when you go away. You mean you change your socks twice a month instead of uh, once? Yes, something like that, yes. I was just wondering, actually. I was just a little wonder if you couldn't possibly be putting yourself around to being in your Grace Darling mood. Oh, darling, isn't she the one that used to sing with an high-pitched voice and ride the hounds to Rochdale? Uh, no, no, that's the one that went to Monaco. No. Grace Darling <laughs> is the daughter of a lighthouse keeper who used to go to the aid of weary travellers in distress. Oh, yes. Yeah, and they reckoned that her speciality was collars and cuffs. Oh, I'm sorry, Ken, I've not got my lighthouse with me. I've left it home on my mum's grand piano. All right, I'll manage. Won't Yvonne do them for you? Oh, she might, if I ask her. Oh, I see it's all right for me to do the skivvying, but not your girlfriend. Right, well, let's just say that washing a man's shirt indicates a degree of intimacy which we have not yet reached. And we have, I suppose. That's when Clause 23, Paragraph 9 comes in, which exempts in-laws. Go on. Just the shirts, right, that's all. Emma. How was Glasgow, then? Fine, fine. Good. The twins? Oh, they're great. They're very happy. You're not brought them home with you, though? No. No. They are all right, aren't they? Oh, yes, they're fine. It's just that, uh, well, I'm not bringing them back. Not for a long time, anyway. How do you mean? Yeah, you know, it's a funny thing, Emma. They've not been up there very long, but already they're different kids. What do you mean, different? Well, they're secure and they're integrated. So for the first time since Val died, they look as if they belong to somebody. Oh, I see. So I had a long chat with their granddad and we decided to leave them up there. Do you mean forever? Well, forever's a big word, isn't it? Let's say I don't intend bringing them back in the foreseeable future. Do the twins know? Oh, yes, yes, they know. In fact, all they were worried about was I was going to take them away. You know, it's a funny thing. I did try, I really did, but it didn't work, did it? And it wasn't fair having them down here being knocked about from pillar to post. Mm. Does Yvonne know? Nope. Nobody knows except you. Well, I suppose that solves one big problem for you. I mean, you'll be able to marry her now, won't you? <laughs> what? Well, I was never one to beat about the bush. No, you weren't, were you? And what if I did? Do you mean what would people think? Yeah. Does it matter, Ken, what other people think? Well, I used to think not, but yes, it does. It really matters. Well, I suppose if I was Ina Sharples, I'd want you to stop in your widower's weed until 1980. That's what they reckon she did, isn't it? But uh, I'm afraid I'm not Ina Sharples, and I've always thought what's past is past. It's water under the bridge, isn't it? And if you've found somebody who suits you and you like her, well, I think you're very lucky. Luckier than some of us have been any road. Did his flipping lawyer say where he was going to see you? Side number one court, just after two o'clock. We went through everything uh, yesterday afternoon. He told me exactly what I had to say and that. He was very good, really. Have you had your breakfast, Jerry? Uh, oh, I had it earlier, thanks, sir. A couple of bits of toast. Look, why don't you get your head down for a couple of hours? We'll give you a knock when we come in I, at dinner, eh? No, I'm, I'm, I'm all right, thanks. I'd, I'd soon be ready earlier. 
Uh, I'll probably go for a walk uh, when you've gone, Mike. Um, hey, I, I forgot to tell you. Guess who I bumped into yesterday? Who's that then? Stella. Stella Randall from the club. Oh, are you kissing made up, did you? Oh, we sorted that out a long time since. She, uh, she wanted to know if we were coming round again. I thought perhaps the three of us could go, maybe tonight. Hey, it's a good idea. What do you reckon to that then, Squire? What? Well, that? we know this club, you see. It's run by a big blonde called Stella Randall. She's a bit of all right, is Stella, isn't she? She's eh? a lovely girl. Hi. Only one thing wrong with Stella. She's got this undying passion for Stanley Ogden. Aye, well, uh, I happen we'll have a do at that some night when I'm back on my feet. I, th I think I'll go for that walk now. I get a bit of fresh air in my lungs. See you. Aye. Stanley Flipping Ogden. Morning. Oh, hello. How about a quick hour for a working lad going to his next job, eh? Sorry, it can't be done. What do you mean? We're not serving yet. That door's been left open for the draymen. Didn't they teach you how to tell the time at your school, oh, Stanley? Oh, give always only a minute, innit? Five minutes, Stanley. Five minutes I'm going to enjoy. Shall I tell you why? Why? Because, Stanley, you are obviously spitting feathers. And then five minutes represent the difference between me having to serve you and being able to tell you to get lost. What's gone into you all of a sudden? Nothing wrong with me, Stanley. Listen, it's not my fault that Lord Fauntner is in court today, is it? Isn't it? No, my mate, it wasn't me. Oh, you just sound like Krupp, Stanley, talking about the Second World War. You were. Look, all right, maybe you didn't do the fighting, but by heck, you certainly made the flaming bullets. Listen, all I want's a quick half. I've got to be in Bessie Street in half an hour. Oh, well, in that case, I'd get my skates on if I were you, cos from what I've heard, you're just about as popular with them bosses of yours as you are with everybody else round here. Them being what you might call special mates of his. I've no need to sup here, you know. I can take my custom somewhere else. Oh, in that case, don't let us detain you, Mr Ogden. You know, I've always said there are certain customers that this public house could well do without. And you happen to be top of the list. Right. Oh, I'm out, you. I'll get lost. Who do you think you're talking to? What's up with him? Well, if you don't know, Hilda, what chance do you think we stand? Uh-huh. Right, well, I'll get up to Marshall's then. Oh, you're all right, mate. Did you, uh, you know that Butty's going in Bay Window? Aye, I'll get it seen to, eh? Well, had we, uh, better be making a move over there, then? Well, look, Jerry, it's only just turned 12 now. If you get over there now, you'll be hanging around the corridors for two hours. Yeah, right, so, uh... How about a couple of quick bevies over the rovers before you go? No, no, thanks. Uh, yeah, I'd sooner not if you, it's all the same to oh, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, uh, what about the flying horse? No, no, thanks. Not till after. Oh, it's a f funny thing, isn't it? What? Well, when I was a little laddie, I'd done something wrong and I knew I had it coming. Could never wait. I just couldn't. I'd go and find me dad and tell him what I'd done. And get it over. Oh, hello, Mrs. Hello. Uh, hello. You've uh, not gone then? Uh, any minute now. Um, I thought you might be able to use these. Uh, well, no, I always could, wouldn't it? Well, let's just say I know exactly how you feel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck then. Ta. Well, a bit be a new experience, any road. Never been in court before. Except for my divorce. It's all a bit blurred now, is that? All right, here we are. Oh, and the uh, children sent that for you. <laughs> That's you in the front there, looking like Mick Jagger. Thanks for nothing. Which one are you? That, that one there? Uh, no, no, that's Blackpool Tarex. But apparently Sorry. we bear an uncanny <laughs> resemblance, particularly when I've been dieting and I'm wearing my shorts. <laughs> anyway, listen, I got them to sign it, so you hang on to that. Could be worth a fortune in a few years. And uh, this is for me. Do you? Thank you. Can I open it now? Help yourself. How are um, Mr. and Mrs. Tatlock? Oh, fine, fine. Mrs. Tatlock reckons she's ten years younger since she's been looking after the kids. Oh. It's all right, is it? Yeah. Oh, well, it's that's... one of my favourites. Is it? That's <laughs> yeah. a great relief, because when it comes to picking perfume, I'm tone deaf or whatever the nasal equivalent is. Uh, what made you choose this one? Nothing special. It, 
wasn't... Oh, it's lovely. What, a favourite of Val's, you mean? Was it? No, she never used it. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. And this is your list. List? Yes, a list of suggestions, suggestions, but if you've got any bright ideas, feel free to change them. Suggestions for what? For the sandwich filling, for the picnic, but don't buy any bread and butter, because we've got plenty of that in the kitchen at home. I see. And what are you going to be doing while I'm doing all this? Well, I am going to be out looking for 007. 007? Mm-hmm. I'm going to try and get a borrowed sports car. So, I will see you back home in half an hour. <laughs> Gerald William Bull. Yes. Case number 10. Wait here. All right, then. Hello. Oh, oh, oh. Look, uh, look, man, there's, there's no need for you to be here. Why don't you get off and oh, shut up, Phil? How long is this likely to go on? Do you know what? Well, hard to say, sir. It's been like the charge of the Light Brigade this morning. Everyone defended. That's a bit unsporting of them. Excuse me, but uh, do you know where the. First on the right, just down the corridor. He packs a fair old wallop, does that mate of yours, doesn't he? Ah, he knows how to look after himself, eh? Stoker doesn't look too bad, though, does he? No, he's all right now. Mind you, he won't be winning any beauty contests for a few weeks. What's Jerry likely to get, any idea? Well, depends what sort of mood they're in on the bench, Councillor. Worst, it could be bad. 400 quid fine, six months, or both. I mean, they're cracking down hard on that sort of thing now, aren't they? Always forget the corks, girl. You're going to end up picking the cork out with a penknife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you manage to borrow the car, all right? Uh, yes, it was made of mine at college. He owed me a favour, so I went round reminding him that he owed me a favour. Very useful things, favours, in fact, aren't they? Mm. Why 007? Why 007? Very good reason, because one of the students got a crush on him because she said that he reminded her of Sean Connery and he'd been trying to live it down ever since. <laughs> right, are we, uh, are we ready for off, then? Well, yes, but you haven't told me where we're going yet. Cannot be done, I'm afraid. Just cannot be done. Why but not? sealed order some am. Even I don't know where we're going. <laughs> oh, have I come at a bad time? <laughs> well, let's say you just caught us, Hilda. Oh, yes. Well, off for the day, then? That's right. Mm. Had a nice time in Scotland, did you? Fine. How's everybody? Oh, they're very well. Peter and Susan? Oh, they're fine, too. Mm. Decided to stop on a bit longer, have they, with the grandma? Just what exactly was it you wanted, Hilda? We are in a bit of a hurry. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, change for 50p for the gas meter. Sorry. No change. Oh. Oh, well, perhaps your uh, young lady. Sorry. No. Yeah. Well, I'll uh, try the rovers then. Why not? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Well, she oh, I'm so sorry for this. Right, Mrs. Walker, I'm off. Off? To court, I told you this morning. Oh, dear, it went completely out of my head. It's very inconvenient. Well, I'm sorry, but I have been called and there's not a blind thing I can do about it. But surely witnesses won't be necessary. Anderson is pleading guilty. So did I, but it's not the police who are calling me. It's Jerry's solicitor. Oh, he has got a solicitor, has he? After a struggle, yeah. What do you mean, after a struggle? Well, Lem wanted to pay for one for him, but he wouldn't hear of it. Said he wouldn't accept charity from nobody. It figures. Anyway, Len and Ray kept on as him and he's finally got one on legal aid. Look, I'll have to go on as his walk. OK. Very well. Time to be at peace. Oh, dear me. Lost again, Stanley. It's just not your day, is it? Tra. Mrs Walker. Back so soon, Mr Ogden. I understood you were lost to us. Oh, well, there's no good bearing grudges, is there? I mean, there's enough suffering in the world as it is, isn't there? And you should know, Stanley. Hmm? Will you have a drink with me, Mrs Walker? No, thank you. You know, it's flaming marvellous, really, isn't it? A bloke like Jerry Boone gets whipped off to court for one wild punch, which the bloke richly deserved any road, and there's flaming anarchy roaming the streets unchecked after every flaming football match. Ah, you're right there. Who's <laughs> talking to you? 
I tell you, it's flaming anarchy. Well, don't blame the police, mate. Blame the system. What do you mean, the system? Look, so I'm a soccer hooligan, right? I'm not interested in football, really, but I go along to the match every Saturday afternoon looking for somebody to thump. Yeah, go on. Well, the police see me coming and nab me. Monday morning, I'm in the magistrate's court. What happens? 50 quid fine, that's all. All right, 50 quid's 50 quid in a lump, but you don't have to pay it off in a lump. Mm. You pay it off over six months, a couple of quid a week. And what's a couple of quid to a fellow that's earning maybe £20 a week spending money? I tell you, they're laughing at the police, mate, and there's not a blind thing the bobbies can do about it. Excuse me, has huh? my dad come here? Who is your dad? Mr Birch, big fellow, flat cap and glasses. He said he were coming. Well, if he has, I haven't seen him. Daddy said he'd come. Well, I, I know. He won't be long. He works nights. I hope she's remembered to wake him up. He sleeps very heavy, does me, Dad. Your mum, you mean? No, my mum's dead. I'm sorry. It's this woman here. Uh, do you smoke? Me, I. Oh, well, there you are. Draw one of these. You, you can you can keep back it if you like. Oh, yeah, sure. Only I, I don't use them. Uh, somebody give them to me and... I didn't like to say I didn't, because it was a thought. Ta. Look at steer to me. The first time, is it? Yeah. Well, don't worry. They, they're very fair, you know. You were regular, then? Oh, no. It's my first time at all for anything like But, I mean, it's, it's a well-known fact, is that, isn't it? I mean, British justice. Very fair. Ah, it's a sort of echo. They've got these frames, you see. And what they do is to put these plastic. Um, you wouldn't have to have any stamps, would you? I don't know, love. Have a look. How many do you want? Well, as many as it takes to send this to Spain first class. No, we're still having a free holiday, is it? That boyfriend of yours. It's not much of a holiday so far, from what I can gather. His last communication was little more than a litany of disaster. Why was it? Well, he spent his first week in Spain in bed with Spanish Tommy. Oh, I see. And then while the cat was away, Miss Miller, the organ if you please, got herself emotionally involved with a rather disreputable courier. Well, she looks the type, doesn't she? Sadie Thompson on pet pills. <laughs> yes, and now he has to hang on for at least another fortnight while the swimming pool of the hotel has been sent to photograph is completed. Well, you want to think yourself lucky that he's just not an ordinary British tourist who believes everything he reads in the brochures. Uh, excuse me, Buttony, won't you, Elsa? Oh, but away. It's an occupational hazard round here. Uh, did you catch up with that fellow, you know, from uh, Radio Manchester? Oh, yes, I got oh. Mrs Sharples to show him round. Oh. There's no cause for alarm. She was really quite enthusiastic for Mrs. Sharples. What, you mean she didn't throw him out on his ear before he'd time to say anything? Oh, that's right. Well, that's something to be thankful for, isn't it? Well, what's all this about Radio Manchester? Didn't you know? We're going to be on the wireless. Who is? The community centre. We had a report around this morning. Hey, why don't you start a knitting circle? You might get yourself featured. <laughs> no, thanks, love. Actually, I gave up knitting when they stopped chopping heads off. It doesn't seem nearly as exciting now. <laughs> well, it wouldn't, would it? Uh, there you are, oh, Hey, um... Well, are you going to be there? Um, Anybody well, fancy a game? Funny, I never heard it. What? That bell they give these fellas to warn other folk they're coming. You'll have heard all about it, won't you? You being what you might call a friend of the family, like. Heard what? About Ken Barlow and the twins. Why, has something happened to them then? Oh, something's happened to him. Mind you, it's not unexpected. I've always said it's still waters what run the quietest. I don't know what you mean. You mean you haven't heard? Oh, it's all over the street. He's ditching them kids in Glasgow with Valerie's mother. Oh, I don't think it's a matter of ditching, Hilda. He's very fond of them children, is Kenneth. Yeah, well, I'm afraid Kenneth's got other things on his mind just at present. What do you mean? Well, you don't have to be one of the three wise men to see what's behind it all. 
He's clearing the decks, isn't he? To make way for his fancy woman from the hotel. Mrs Ogden, what a very unkind thing to say. If Kenneth's leaving them in Glasgow, I'm sure it's only because he thinks they'll be brought up better there. And knowing some of the people who live around here is not far wrong neither. Good afternoon. You know, it's quite incredible, really, when you think about it, isn't it? What is it? Well, hundreds of times I've driven over little humpback bridges and I've got a glimpse of white cruisers going along green canals and I've said to myself, that is the way to spend a day. And yet this is the first time I've ever done anything about it. Do you mean to tell me that this is the first time you've actually driven one of these things? That's right. Well, I think you might have warned me before you lured me aboard. Oh, don't worry, love. Show me an Englishman and I'll show you a sailor. We're a seagoing nation, oh, you know. Oh, yes. And when did you last go to sea? I took the kids over to New Brighton and the boat was bucketing about and I was as sick as a dog. Still, <laughs> they say Nelson used to be sick at first day. I don't know, was it Gregory Peck? You know, you're getting me very worried. Well, I'd say touch wood if I could, but I'm sure everything around here is just fiberglass, so you'd have a job. <sighs> Do they mind very much when you are leaving? Peter and Susan? No, not very much. In fact, it was all Mrs Tasslock could do to stick around long enough to say goodbye, so I think it's better that way. What did Mrs uh, Ogden mean this morning when she said about them staying a bit longer? Oh, she must have been talking to Alma then. I told her just before I rang you. Told her what? The, uh, the news about the twins. About them staying up in Scotland. Permanently? Oh, for the foreseeable future, yeah. I see. Um, why are they staying? I mean, it's it's not because of us. Oh, no, do me a favour. No, it's the best thing for everybody. It's a much better school than Bessie Street. They're settled, they're happy, and there's no unpleasant memories. I see. Mind you, I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't say that... I do see that it simplifies things for us. I mean, it does sort of move the final obstacle, doesn't it? Obstacle? To us getting married. Will you marry me, Evan? Now, you're quite clear in your own mind about what you're going to say. Yes, I think so. Good. Now, after the clerk's read the charge, he'll ask you where it is you want to be tried. And I say I want to be tried here today. That's right. And don't worry. Well, it's... Hello. Oh, hello, Beth. Oh, Miss, uh, Miss Lynch, isn't it? That's right. I'm glad you could make it. Yes. Gerald Everybody. William Booth. Y yes. Follow me, please. Uh, no, I'm afraid you'll have to wait here until you're called. Oh. Case number 10, I know this time. Gerald William Booth. Is your name Gerald William Booth? Yes, sir. And do you live at number 9, Coronation Street, Weatherfield? Yes, sir. Uh, just for the present, why? I'm representing this defendant, Mr. Harris. Oh, very well. Gerald William Booth, it's alleged that on the 20th day of October 1971, you did assault one James Stoker, thereby occasioning unto him actual bodily harm. Do you understand the charge? Yes, sir. Now, I have to tell you that for this offence, you can be tried either by this court or by a jury at quarter sessions. If you elect to be tried by this court and the magistrates find that your character and history is such that greater punishment should be inflicted upon you than is within their power to inflict, then you may still be committed to quarter sessions for sentencing. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Do you wish to be tried by this court or at quarter sessions? By this court. Very well. And do you plead guilty or not guilty to the charge? Guilty, sir. 